Komo walako ke laz a pamano kha ba gobo tam a takaba wa khabal na marats Lo e shalakh roh wa shaka khazaba tabla kha la yen Ula shakhar wa he mate pagam haza Asab a asab ya ogakab khalkha kabat akabat sha arif ya o sha a Ya khat ashemno Khataan batsara kha ghadar batho khadabaro tha emna ma adam. Ghala parat slapaneham. Paratso wa yaibaro shayar wa yatsa obo. Wa yaibar malach am. Lapaneham wa ya o ba raash am. Shalom lakhal ya o sha'al. Bamat rem shane ane ya o da bandor ha ghit. Wa khurash ma mazrach ma arat ma rachak ish khatsato khabad ya o halalo af ya o I just read from the prophet Mecha aka Micah This is chapter 2 verses 10 through 13 Verse 10 to the end of the chapter And now let's break down each word First word in verse 10 Como Como means to get up. This is an imperative verb in the second person, masculine, plural. The root is ka and ma. Uh, the wa here in the middle of the two radicals is because this is an imperative verb and the wa at the end is inflection for second person, masculine, plural. Como, get up. Walacho, another imperative preceded by a conjunction wa. This means to go or to get out. So como walacho means to get up and go, get up and go, or get up and get out. Next word che is the conjunction particle for. After that we have la, negative particle, not. Za'af, after that, is the demonstrative pronoun, this. Ha manocha, uh, the definite article ha, first letter, then manocha, rest, the, rest. Next word ba, gabor, preposition. Uh, followed by gabor means on account of or because of. Uh, next word tam a is the verb. Uh, third person feminine singular perfect aspect. It means it pollutes. It pollutes. Next word ta chabal from the root chabal la the sharash chabal means to destroy. Uh, the thought in front of that for inflection in the. Third person, feminine, singular. It will destroy. It will destroy. Next word after that, wa chabal. This is the noun this time, preceded by the conjunction wa. Wa chabal and the destruction. Uh, namarats, next word. This is the passive participle. Uh, it means it is grievous or it is sickening from the root maratsa, which means to be sick or to be repugnant, repulsive. Or grievous. So line 10 reads, get up and go or get up and get out for this is not the rest because it pollutes. Okay, it will destroy and the destruction is sickening or grievous. This is why the remnant is commanded to leave because as long as you stay in the lands of your captivity where you were brought by ships to be enslaved and to be punished with the curses this is what is going to continue to happen you are going to continue to see pollution and destruction and the destruction is getting worse and worse and grievous for grievous for our people okay the land is polluted it pollutes the land itself is polluted okay we can't even eat clean food we can't even grow food the land is polluted from the blood of our ancestors that has been spilled there by the oppressor and the time has come to leave. Okay, your curses do not change. Uh, and by staying in that land, you have to obey the command, Como Walajo, and leave. Uh, verse 11, first word, lo. This is a conditional particle, not to be confused with the preposition followed by a pronominal suffix, third person, masculine, singular, lo would be uh, to him or for him. This is the conditional particle, if. So the way we would distinguish this word from the other word is we 
uh, this wa here at the end is going to be an O vowel. Every time it's not the first letter of a word, it's an O vowel. And in this instance, we are going to lengthen this vowel. So instead of it, instead of it being low, it's going to be low. Okay, vowel length, we lengthen the vowel to make the distinction. The inflection is low. It means if. Next word, ish, is the word for man. Next word, halach, is the active part, uh, participle. Uh, in construct, and this means to to go or to walk or walk in. Uh, after that, we have the word roch, which means wind. So these words here, lo esh halach roch, means if a man walking of the wind, walking of the wind. This is a man who's like the wind. Uh, he's going this way and that way, and he's not full of anything substantive except for this next word here, washakar and false. Okay, he's empty when it comes to substance, but he's filled with this word here, shakar, falsehood. Okay, chazab, next word, this is the uh, verb in the intensive stem, the perfect aspect, third person masculine singular. He lies. Okay, this person is like the wind, He's full of falsehood and he lies. Next word, atop, from the root not top. This is an imperfect aspect verb. Uh, in the first person, common singular. Atop means I will drop. I will drop. And also uh, can be used to indicate uh, to prophesy. I will prophesy. Okay, the prophet is the person who drops his words towards a person or towards a place. So this is the same type of idea here. I will drop lachat for you or to you. La yen, preposition followed by noun yen, means for wine. I will drop for you or I will prophesy for you uh, for wine or of wine. And the next word, wa, la shachar, and of strong drink. Okay, so this prophet here is a prophet of the wind. He's being driven by the wind. He's all over the place. He's empty when it comes to substance, but he's filled with falsehood and he lies. And the substance of his message has to do with wine and strong drink, meaning his message is intoxicating. Okay. Next word, wa he. He here, ha ya ha is the verb. Third person masculine singular was, or it was, or he was, but the wa in front of that is going to reverse the tense around. Wa, he, he will be. Okay, he will be. Ma tape. Next word. Ma tape is the active participle. Uh, the same root as atop, na, ta, and uh, uh, <clears throat> here, atop. The same root as this word here, which is na, ta, and pa, is. It, is how you form this participle. And this stands, this means the one who drops. It's a noun. The one who drops, or the one who prophesies. So wahe matep, he will be the one who prophesies haram haza. This word here, haram, is the nation. Haza is the uh, definite article followed by the demonstrative pronoun this. So this nation, all right, this prophet here, who's empty when it comes to substance, but is filled with falsehood and lies and says he will prophesy about wine and strong drink, he will be the prophet for this nation. That's the person that uh, uh, gets the most attention, and he's the one that the people prefer to listen to. Now, why is that coming here after verse 10, which tells you to leave? Because we are supposed to be on alert that when it's time to leave, you will have these false prophets telling you that that is not what you should do. Okay, and they, their message was, is going to be uh, intoxicating and influencing people to disobey the command. These two words at verse 10, como walaso, this is a direct order. This is not a suggestion for you to think about. This is something you must do. You are commanded to do this. But there are going to be false prophets telling you that that is not what you should do. All right. Verse 12, asap. Uh, this is the infinitive absolute, gathering, followed by a'asap. This is the imperfect verb, first person common singular uh, uh, in the imperfect aspect, I will gather. So this infinitive absolute is the grammatical intensifier for this verb. 
And these two words together mean I will absolutely gather. Okay, this is the creator. This is Yahweh himself speaking. I will absolutely, most definitely gather. And that this is being said because the previous verse introduced false prophets who are going to be influencing people with an intoxicating message not to obey. But even in spite of all that, it's not going to stop what Yahweh has Plan. He is absolutely going to gather Yah proper name, and here this name, aka uh, Jacob, is being used collectively for the whole nation. Chalcha, next word, is the word for all of you. Okay, I will absolutely gather Yah Jacob, all of you. Next word, Kabatz, uh, is the word for collect, similar to Asaf. This is going to be also an infinitive absolute, strengthening the next verb in the first person. Common singular in the imperfect aspect, akabats, I will collect. So kabats, akabats is I will absolutely, I will surely, I will most definitely collect sha'areth, feminine noun, uh, the remnant. And this is in construct with the next noun, yao shara. Okay, so he's going to collect all of you who are the remnants, not the whole nation, just the part of the nation that constitutes the remnant, those who are righteous those who are the obey name, those who are needy for Yahweh and want him and want to keep his commandments. That's the remnant. That's who he's absolutely going to gather and the rest he's going to discard. All right, next line, Yachad. This is the adverb together. After that, we have Ashemno. This is the verb Shom uh, being put in the causative stem in the imperfect aspect, first person common singular. And the two letters of the root Sha and Ma are here. The Wa drops out. It gets uh, the Ya insertion here and indicating this is a causative stem. And then we have a pronominal suffix for a third person masculine singular no. Ashem no. This means I will put him. I will put him. So Yaha together I will put him. Together I will put him. Chatsa'an is the next word. This word here, Chatsa'an, means like the sheep. The cha in the beginning is the particle of similarity. Then you have tsa'an, uh, the noun for sheep. Batsara is the word for enclosure. So like the sheep enclosure, cha gadar, the next word, this is the uh, also a particle of similarity, the letter cha here, followed by gadar, which means fold or flocks, I'm sorry. Like the flocks, next word batoch uh, means in the midst of or amongst. Ha debaro, this is the definite article ha the followed by debar means, which means uh, fold, and then the wa at the very end is for third person masculine singular possessive phenomenal suffix, uh, his or of him. So, yachad shemno together I will put him like the sheep enclosure. Okay, like the flocks in the midst of his fold. He's going to gather the remnant together like sheep and enclose them in a sheep enclosure, in a confined, isolated area like sheep. That's how he's going to collect you, the remnant, and put you back together as a nation. Uh, next word, da'emna. Okay, this is a verb in the causative stem. The root of it is ha, wa, and ma. The, the middle radical drops out here, the ya insertion here for indicating causative stem. And the tha in the front, and the two letters, na and ha, in the back indicate that this is going to be third person feminine plural. Okay? And the root home means to make noise, to make a great sound. So in the imperfect aspect, means they will make a great noise, a great sound. Next word, ma adam, from man. So even though we're talking about a remnant that's going to be collected, when it's all said and done, when he's put them back in their sheep enclosure, they are still going to be a crowd, a massive number of people who make a, a, a great noise because of the number of men. All right. Last verse, verse 13. Gala, first word. This is the uh, third person masculine singular verb in the perfect aspect it means to go up. So he has gone up is Gala. Ha parats, this is the definite article ha, 
followed by parats, which is the parats, which is the active participle, the one who breaks in pieces. So gala ha parats, he has gone up, the one who breaks in pieces, la panehem, next word, ahead of them, or before them. Parazzo is the verb for here. This is the third person masculine plural in the perfect aspect. They break in pieces. Or they have broken in pieces. We I borrow, next word, uh, from the root gabar to pass. And this is third person masculine plural in the imperfect aspect. So they will pass through. Shire, the word for gate. They will pass through a gate. Well, yatsa'o, from the root yatsa'a, means to exit, to go out. And this is in the third person, masculine plural, in the imperfect aspect. And they will exit, or they will exodus, bow by it. So we are talking about an exodus of the remnant from the land that is polluted, the land that's destroying them. There's going to be an exodus. This is how Yahweh is going to collect his remnant, in an exodus, okay, by a gate but they have been preceded by one who's called the parats, the one who breaks in pieces has gone ahead of them, gone before that, before they did. Okay. But they're going to follow him through the gate. Next line, last line, Wayabar, same root as Wayabaro. Here it is in the third person masculine singular. He passed through and he passed through. Malach Am, the word Malach is king and the Ma here at the end is the pronominal suffix for third person masculine plural. Their king, Lapanahem, ahead of them, before them. So the parats, the one who breaks in pieces, is the leader. He's their king, and he's already made the exodus ahead of them, before them. And then now they are going to follow him to, to where he is. This is how Yahweh is, is conducting this exodus, okay? So this whole group of people have a leader who is a human, who is their king, the one who breaks in pieces, Okay, that's describing his character. But the one who's over all of this, the one who's really in charge, the one who's orchestrating all of this, it says here the next clause, well, ya o ba ra'ash am. And ya o is at the head of them. Ba ra'ash am, ba preposition, ra'ash head. And the ma here at the end is for third person masculine plural. So ya o is at the head of them. He is the one orchestrating this, not man. Okay, the remnants who is following the one who breaks in pieces, right? They're not following a man. This man is following Yao, and Yao is the one who these people are following, not following, not man. Okay, when you follow the man who Yao is put in the uh, the front as the face of the movement, that does not mean you're following a man. You are following Yao. When you obey the command to get up and leave, to get up and go, okay then he is the one gathering you. He is the one putting you back in your sheepfold. He is the one uh, that is making this exodus happen, not, not man. Shalom lechem.